everyone always asks me how I curl my hair and then I want to make a video on how I curl my hair but I literally change how I curl my hair every other week because I use a curling wand and with a curling wand I've discovered that you can get your hair to look however you want with just one curling wand. You don't need to go out and buy a million different curling irons to get different looks. You don't need to watch a million different tutorials to get a different look. I have literally gotten to the point where I can see a hairstyle and I just know exactly how to do it with the curling wand and my type of hair because I just know my hair so well and I know how to use a curling wand so well. I wanted to just walk you guys through how I learned how to use a curling wand and how you can use a curling wand to get any kind of curl. So first, obviously, you need a curling wand and mine is the Conair Infinity. And for me, this one just works for pretty much everything. It's the biggest one, it's an extra large. You can get curling wands that don't go from big to small. Those are obviously gonna give you bigger curls in general because they don't get smaller at the end. So if you want really, really big curls, I would recommend one of those. But since this is a curling wand and not a curling iron, these hold curls way, way, way more. People with the hardest to curl hair, I've curled with like Shirley Temple ringlets with this curling wand. I think it's the best. I think you can use it for anything. And if you find that you aren't getting the results you want, just keep watching and I hopefully we can figure it out together. So after you have your curling wand, you want to figure out your own hair. So put the curling wand away and let's evaluate your life. So first of all, you want to figure out how your hair is naturally. My hair naturally is just really coarse, kind of texturized, a little bit frizzy and wavy. So if I'm going to let my hair air dry, it's going to be obviously not like this. It's going to be frizzy, wavy, and if I curl it, it's not going to be smooth and glamorous and beautiful. Obviously, sometimes I do curl my hair after it's natural and I get a more beachy, wave, texturized look. If that's what you're going for and you have that type of hair, that's how you do it. But if you don't want that and you do have more wavy hair, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to blow dry or straighten your hair before. And if you aren't going to blow dry your hair, I'd recommend straightening it. It is a lot of heat damage to your hair, so don't like get it perfectly straight. Like I kind of just do this because I would not really wear it like this because it's kind of wavy. But I just try and get it smooth so that the curls go in smooth. Then if you have hard to curl hair or naturally straight hair, I would suggest doing nothing before it. And if you do want a more texturized beachy look, I'll get to that next. So once you know what type of hair you have and what kind of curl you want, you need to prep your hair for it. So since I do want a soft, loose, smooth curl, I straightened my hair before this because I don't really want beachy waves, I just want a nice smooth curl. Next, you're going to want to figure out the heat setting on your curling iron. If you have hard to curl hair, I would automatically suggest just going to the highest heat setting, but I have pretty normal, easy to curl hair, and so I put it on 360. That's the second highest, and since I don't want a ringlet curl and I want loose curls, I don't want to put the heat setting high because then it's going to have a really strong hold and I'm not going to be able to pull it out. But sometimes when you do straighten your hair before you curl it, it's obviously not going to be as easy to hold because you've already done something to it. So sometimes I'll put it on a higher heat setting if I notice that the curls aren't holding as well. So after you pick out your heat setting, you want to just make sure that you know that the lower you go, the looser and the less hold they're going to have. And the higher heat setting you go, the more hold you're going to have. Next, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to, let's say you're looking at a picture and you want your hair to look like that. You're going to want to see how much curl is up here, how much curl is in this section, and how much curl is at the ends. You need to do this because if there's a lot of texture up here, you're obviously going to want to curl your hair to the root. If there's more of just a curl down here, you're not going to even want to touch this part with the curling iron, which is a good thing because if you strained your hair, this part is already smooth. If you didn't strain your hair before and you're trying to get just a smooth look, this part is going to be frizzy and gross on top. So after you figure out what kind of curl you want in your hair, whether it's a lot of curls and a lot of texture or soft curls at the bottom, that's when you're going to start sectioning. The bottom two sections are probably the least important sections because they don't really frame your face and they kind of end up just falling behind. So I usually don't go about a specific way when I'm curling the bottom sections of my hair unless it's like a really specific style. But there's two things you want to make sure when you are using a curling wand because these are like the most epic reasons why people always mess up their hair. So, so basically a lot of people forget that there's two different ways to curl your hair with a curling wand. So I'm just going to show you how a lot of people end up doing it and it's not the necessarily right or wrong way, it just gives a certain look. So when you have your hair and you're holding your hair with the curling iron, you obviously want to point it down. And most styles, like pretty much all styles, you're going to see that the hair is always getting curled away. You barely ever are going to curl your hair towards your face because it's not really a modern day style of curling hair. Unless you want that, that's totally fine. But you need to make sure that you're curling your hair away from your face for that blown out look. And then what a lot of people don't realize is the piece of hair is flat. When you're curling your hair around the iron, you need to keep this piece flat. And you want to make sure that it's just flat the entire way around the curling iron. The longer you hold your hair on the curling iron, obviously, the tighter the curl is going to be and the more hold you're going to get. Doing this, you're just going to get a basic, regular curl. What people end up doing when they curl their hair is they take the piece and they just kind of twist it around. 
They don't really care, they just twist it around and then they wonder, after they've held it for so long, they wonder why it comes out like this. This is because this is more of a wave. So you can either basically use your curling iron like this, or like this. You can see the difference because this one's a wave and this one's a ringlet. So you want to decide if you want more wavy hair or ringlet hair. And a lot of people don't understand why their curls always come out like this instead of this. And it's because they're not keeping their hair flat against the iron. So like you saw in this curl, this curl is obviously curled at the bottom and there's barely anything at the top. If you want more textured hair, really, really big curls, tons of curls, you're going to want to keep it at the root and make sure the top of the root is curled. This is curling the whole piece of curl, which is going to give you a huge voluminous waves, really big curly hair like this, because the whole piece is curled. Sometimes you're going to want to, if you want just a little less texture, just a little wave, you're going to just curl the middle of your hair. So you have some at the top knot in it and some at the bottom knot in it. And this is just going to give you a little wave in your hair, barely anything, just there. Or you can do the ends of your hair when you curl just the ends, depending on the length of your hair, and you get a nice flip at the bottom of your hair. So there's so many different ways you can curl your hair, as you can see. And then basically you work your way up your hair and once you get to your face is basically the main factor. So basically the most important part is pretty much this section because that's what the whole style is going to look like. And what I like to do is first you need to pick your part. Do you want your hair in the middle part? Do you want your hair in the side part? And then do you want your hair going away from your face? Or do you want your hair curling into your face? Most of the time you're going to want it going away from your face. Unless you're doing a more old school type of look. But what you're going to do is you want to frame your face with these pieces. So once again you need to decide am I going to curl it all the way up to the root? Am I going to curl it halfway? Or do I just want the ends? If you just want the ends, you're going to do it. And you're going to make sure that you space out the curl on the curling iron. When you're doing this more towards the top of your hair, you can easily take the curling iron and do a curl really tight and close together like this, or you can space it out the length of the curling iron like this and make it take up the whole curling iron even though there's a lot of space in between. That's going to give you a more loose way. I'm going to show you guys how I do my hair since a lot of you ask. I really mostly do just the bottom section of my hair curled and I do it with the curling wand and I'm just going to show you guys how you do it. So those are my tips when you're going about doing your hair if it's not working because sometimes you watch tutorials and you don't understand why it's not working for you and those are probably some obvious reasons why that I wanted to point out and I'll just show you guys how I do my hair. A lot of the times I curl my hair really tight and then I slowly loosen it and let it go because instead of keeping it tight I make sure that some of it gets on the iron really really tight and then I just slowly go down and loosen it up. It takes a while to figure out how you want your hair to be curled, how your hair curls with different wands and different products but it's really easy once you get a hang of it and using a curling wand can give you so many different types of hairstyles. Since I straightened my hair before this and I'm using it on not the highest heat setting, these curls are going to be really, really loose and bigger and not stay in as well, which is okay because I like the whole loose look and I don't want my hair to be perfectly curled all the time. When I'm framing my face and curling my hair, I like to kind of do a little bit twist at the end and I always hold the end of piece of my hair a little more than I need to because I don't want to curl the complete ends of my hair. I like it when it has just a little straight piece at the end. I think it just makes it look a little more texturized and natural. A lot of times if you try and put too much hair on the curling iron, you're not going to get as good of a curl because the heat won't travel throughout all of the hair, so not all the hair is going to curl. So sometimes if you want a lot more texture, really really tight curls, you're going to want to do smaller sections of your hair. I like to curl the hair in front of my face a little looser because I don't want a lot of tight curls surrounding my face, but I still want body and movement in the back, so I'll do those tighter. If you have hard to curl hair, I wouldn't pull out the hair until you're done, but since I don't really care and I don't really want really big waves, I just pull it out right away.
So this is how my hair turns out. Basically, since I did straighten it, blow dry it and straighten it before, they really, the curls like always really fall out. Sometimes I'll go back in and since this section is so consistent, I'll go back in and take little pieces and curl them so I have some more like texture in it because I don't really like when it is consistently one. So if you do want more texture, you should go back in. And even sometimes I'll curl it the opposite way just to give it some more texture. But right now it's fine and then I just flip it up. Um, I don't use hairspray because I don't like hairspray and I don't think I need it because I like loose curls anyway. So yeah, this is how I curl my hair. It's just messy, loose waves and that's how I pretty much do it all the time. If you guys have any other requests for curling hair or anything, leave them in the comments below of course and I hope these tips helped and this is just how I curl my hair so I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!